Hi, and welcome to this Tips and Tricks video. My name is Dave Hittiman. I'm the Application Specialist for the Steel segment here at Trimble. And in this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about UDAs, not just UDAs in general, but UDAs that can specifically enhance some workflows and automate some drawing processes. So for those of you who are kind of new to Tecla, maybe you're not familiar with the term UDA, what I'm referencing there is a user-defined attribute. And a user-defined attribute is simply additional notes you can put on a part. The default user-defined attributes are set up by each area office with what we call localization. So in the US office, we have localized these tabs that you see here. And typically what we show things when they're first looking at Tecla is going to be stuff like, uh, you know, using this to set your shop status or using this to set your site status. Or you know, if you're strictly focusing on the detailing side, you can put your checking information in here. You're drawn by, modeled by, whatever. Um, but like I said, there, there are some of these UDAs that have additional features to automate some stuff on the drawing. So that's really what I want to focus on today. There's also not just user-defined attributes on each part, but there's user-defined attributes at the project level. So we'll focus on those first. Um, if you go to your file menu and you uh, open up your project properties, and at the bottom of that you should see this user-defined attributes. And I'm, I'm using Tecla Structures 2018 right now, so you might find your UDAs in a, a slightly different uh, location depending on your version if it's a little bit older than this one. But once you open this up, uh, this has looked pretty much this way for several years now, so this should at least look familiar when you get to your project UDAs. Now again, there are some standardized notes here that you can you know, put in your project standard paint, your standard bolt grade and stuff like that. But specifically, I want to focus on these switches. Um, there are several tabs that have to do with drawing switches. Uh, and what they do is change the appearance of the drawings. You know, there's a lot of different uh, companies that have different standards. Uh, some people like to see one, things one way on a drawing. Other people like to see things a different way on a drawing. So just as an example of that, you know, somebody, uh, traditional steel detailing, they might want to see the shape information underneath the call off. So we've actually included that. You can turn on profile info. And here you can see the W and F, that's my web height and thickness, and my flange width and thickness. So some people like to see that. Um, that's just a switch that you can flip on. Things like showing your stacked revision list. Yes, I want to show it stacked, or no, I just want to see the most recent revision. Um, so there's a couple of those tabs in here, and I definitely recommend coming in and looking at some of those different options. One that I show a lot to uh, people doing handrail detailing, um, if I open up a sample handrail drawing here that I have, the out-of-the-box U.S. Imperial environment has total feet or linear feet as the default uh, for your build material. And some people like that. We just need a total number of feet of pipe that, that we're going to need to build this handrail. Then we leave it up to the shop to make it happen, right? Um, some people, though, they don't want to go to that, that kind of loose detail. They actually want to have specific lengths for each member. Well, that is built in to the project properties. All I have to do is change this show total length to no. Um, and any project property, once you change it, all you have to do is reopen the sheet. You don't have to recreate the drawing. You don't have to re-edit anything. And here you can see now each individual piece is spelled out as its own line item. Okay, so that's just one example of a drawing switch. Uh, something else that you might want to look at here, again, we're dealing with a lot of different customers with a lot of different needs and a lot of different standards, um, we've gone ahead and created five different styles of title blocks and BOMs for you to use. So here I'm using a style one bill of material. You can see there's a style two, three, four, and five. Um, there's also the same thing for my title block. So I have a style one, two, three, four, five. So maybe I want to change that to like a style four or something like that. Again, all you have to do once you modify that option is reopen the sheet. Uh, you reopen the sheet, you get that that new change. Okay, so these project level switches affect every drawing across the board uh, very very quickly to change it to you know a, a more this type of standard that you might want to see. Um, as far as modeling based user defined attributes, uh, I want to take a look at just a few. I can't take the time to go through all of them. Um, again, I just want to focus on the ones that that affect something it, it, more than just a note. You know, automating certain processes. Uh, one example um, is one that a lot of people might not actually be uh, aware of. So when you are dealing with something like bracing in the steel detailing world, uh, a lot of times people want to detail a brace with a draw. 
uh, which means it is slightly shorter than the actual detailed length. And the, the reason for this is twofold. One, so that it can maintain intention, and two, so that over the course of a building many Benny Bays, um, you don't have your, your building start to splay because the parts are too long. So you actually you fabricate them slightly smaller. Uh, in this case, I have this, this part that's been detailed out this is the actual measured detailed length is 22, 11, and 11 sixteenths. Um, if I go to the user defined attributes of this part, you can do this either by right clicking like I'm doing now and choosing user defined attributes, or you can also double click on it to go to the properties pane and access the custom properties or user defined attributes that way. There is a field here called shorten, and shorten is the, the draw value. How much do you want to shorten this, this member to account for that 1 16th or 1 8th or whatever uh, draw on a brace? Now, it's also good uh, practice when dealing with user-defined attributes to uncheck all of the options. That way, you're not accidentally changing something on a different tab that you don't even see. Um, so I'm going to try to do that here to just you know illustrate good practice. But here, if I want to change my shorten value, uh, I will go here and type in a value like 1 8th of an inch and then modify. And this member, you can see now it was 22, 11, and 11 sixteenths, and now it's 22, 11, and 9 sixteenths. And that's going to be reflected across my drawings, build materials, uh, order lists, CNC files, all that good stuff. Um, that value, by the way, is averaged over the whole length of that member. So it's, you know, an eighth of an inch or something like that. It's such a small value, you're not going to see that if you, if you measure between points or bolt holes or something like that, unless you go from one end to the other. If you try to make a shortened value, something very large, like a foot or two feet or something like that, you will see the dimensions between bolt holes and stuff start to change because, again, it's being averaged over the total length of the member. Okay, So some other ones on here that will automate and change some things for us. Uh, one would be the camber. If I double click on this guy, uh, bring up its user defined attributes, camber is a note typically in steel detailing, you know, how much upwards camber do we have an inch or inch and a quarter, something like that. Usually it's not actually shown as curvature in a drawing, it's just an annotation. So we can go ahead and do that with camber. But if you're using the U.S. Imperial drawing settings, we actually have it built in that that camber note is going to be on our plan drawings automatically. So if I go ahead and open up this E1 drawing that I have created uh, right now, and let me zoom in on this guy here, we can see that the camber value of one and a quarter is now actually showing up in the mark. So it has been localized with what we call a uh, object level setting. That object level setting finds parts that have a camber note and automatically changes their mark to include that camber value. So there's a lot of those uh, in our drawings that we have predefined for you to utilize uh, if you want to. The next one I'm not actually going to change, but just so that you're aware what it is, um, we have things like this preliminary mark. Now, preliminary mark is not meant for you to actually fill it out. Preliminary mark is something else. Um, back in the day when you, when you do a traditional detailing, you might have a page line for an advanced bill of material. Um, well, what Tecla offers instead is this preliminary mark. So when you model in your members, you model in your sticks, you have no connections yet, you just have your main members, you run a first round of numbering using number modified objects usually. What you can then do is highlight objects in the model and go to the numbering settings and choose save preliminary numbers. What that does, it takes that first round of numbering and it actually saves it to this UDA field so that over the course of the job when you start adding welds and bolts and cuts and things like that where the piece mark is going to change, you can always reference back to the order number or the preliminary mark for that piece because that will not change. So that's something else, another workflow that can be very helpful. Uh, one that's extremely common is using existing member. So uh, some people know that it's there. Some people don't really use it uh, all that much. But uh, existing member does a couple of things in the U.S. Imperial environment. One of those is going to be the uh, uh, object representation on the model side has been changed so that anything marked as existing is automatically going to show up as a kind of a dark gray transparent member. That way, right away, you can see, okay, I'm not supposed to detail that part. I shouldn't be making drawings of that part. I shouldn't be uh, maybe over detailing that piece because I don't need that much information. It's, a, it's an existing member. Uh, something else, though, that's handy to know is once you mark a part as existing, all of the automated stuff, you know, things like reports that we've created, uh, things like in the master drawing catalog where we have uh, rule sets or drawing wizards, those are built with filters that say skip 
parts marked as existing. So by marking a part as existing, if you're using the, the localized settings, uh, you won't get drawings for those parts. They're not going to show up in reports on you. Now, if I highlight this member and say, make me a sheet, Tecla is still going to make me a sheet. This is simply referring to the automated stuff. Okay. Uh, some other different types of user-defined attributes on here. One that I've talked about before is this fixed drawing main view. Um, I'm not going to get into detail with that, but basically that allows you to customize which face is your front face on your sheet. I have a whole separate video on this that I'll include a link in the description below. Uh, the next ones would be this gauge material bought out item and bought out item catalog number. Now the reason I mention all of those together is because they have a similar focus in mind. You may model something one way in Tecla, but want it to, to be displayed a different way in your BOM. So here, gauge material, if I have a piece of plate, like let's say I have one of these treads right here, um, this tread in Tecla is a plate 1 8. So that's what's going to show up in my bill material. If I don't want this to show up as plate 1 8, I want this to show up as a you know 14 gauge pan or something like that, what I would do is I would change the user-defined attribute for gauge material to instead say 14 gauge. Now what that's going to do is override the actual profile in the BOM in the U.S. Imperial environment and it's going to show sheet 14 gauge and then it's going to show the dimensions of that 14 gauge plate. So gauge material overrides the profile. You'll find that the UDA for bought out items does the same thing. So if I, for example, click on this little elbow that I have here, this is based on the component that created it automatically set as a bought out item, yes. What that's saying right there is that that part, yes, we want to override the bill of materials and the shape. So I don't want it to say pipe one and a quarter. I want it to show a catalog number. You know, this is great for something you might be ordering from a manufacturer rather than building in-house. So if this elbow was a, a Wagner product, I might come in here and say, okay, this is a Wagner. I don't know any Wagner part numbers off the top of my head. So I'll just say this is a, a Wagner 112. Um, when I do that, if I were to update my numbering and reopen that handrail drawing, uh, we'll actually see that value reflected in the BOM. So when I zoom in here, you can see that the M38 is a Wagner 112. So that's using the bought out item UDA along with the, you know, the actual value that I want to use with it below. So those are very, very helpful for anything that you might be purchasing rather than manufacturing yourself. As far as some other user-defined attributes that are going to, you know, kind of enhance workflows, one of them is going to be this end condition tab. And let me actually show you what that looks like. So uh, I'm going to choose a beam. Let's say this guy right here. We'll bring up its user-defined attributes for a beam. Make sure I close that guy. Um, on the end conditions tab, this is where you might put, you know, shear values, um, you know, actual load information. Uh, if you're using one of our partners' design softwares, they may read or write to these fields. But something that you can use from a de steel detailing perspective is this moment connection symbol. Um, right now, these are both set to no. If this beam had moment connections on either ends, what, what I could do is set these both to yes. And what that does is it allows me to use a tool on the plan drawing side to automatically mark moment connection details on the ends. Um, so if I zoom in here, what is traditionally shown would be like a small black triangle representing that this is a, a moment connected beam. Um, you can put those on yourself or because I've marked it on the modeling side that that's a moment connected beam, uh, we actually have a small application that can help do that automatically. So there's this little uh, icon under the macros called drawing tools. If I double click on it, what it's going to give me is a toolbar that has a, a bunch of different tools on it, but I'm not going to go through all of those today. Um, the one specifically that I'm interested in is this guy showing a moment connection symbol. If you highlight the view and run that part of the tool, you get this other dialog box act, asking you to choose a color and a size. I'm just going to leave those as default and hit create. So you can see that it's gone and automatically applied the moment connection detail to the ends of that beam because I marked the start end and the end end to have a moment connection symbol on the modeling side. Um, one more that I want to focus on between the, the model and then coming over to the drawings, uh, let me close out of this and go back to the model, is uh, shear studs. So a lot of times uh, you might want to provide field welded studs to the top for things like composite flooring or what have you. Um, now, 
we could do that manually on the plan drawing, but we're trying to avoid doing things manually here, right? We're trying to, to automate as much as we can. So there's a user-defined attribute specifically for that. Uh, in here, if I go to the UDAs, there's a field studs tab. These values actually pull from the bolt catalog. So they're reading actual available bolts or studs from the bolt catalog. So I'll come in here and choose a stud four inch long by a three quarter inch diameter. And we're going to have, say, 16 studs on this guy. So I'll modify that. That's now a note associated with that part. And again, the localization that we have looks for that information, reads that data, and then will automatically update the marks to include that number of shear studs. So again, this is something that you know, traditionally people might be putting on manually, but we can automate that process by using these user-defined attributes and by um, you know, utilizing the stuff that we've localized for you uh, in the U.S. Imperial environment. One last thing on the drawing side, uh, we mentioned how in the project properties there are different drawing switches. Um, well, on the drawing side, we've also included some user-defined attributes that uh, will override some of those drawing switches. So here you can see there's show RFI information, show a stacked revision list, show a grid location. So right now it's, it's showing default, which means it's just simply using the project properties. But you can override those. So if you find that the revision list is getting too large or you don't have a good place for that grid location for columns, you can turn those off rather than having them on and in the way and having to move your views around them. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, we find that there's a lot of these things that people simply aren't aware of. And, you know, we put a lot of work into trying to, uh, you know, make the program easier to use and, and automate a lot of this stuff. If you have any suggestions or any requests, you can always reach out to your local help desk. If you have any questions on how any of these work, you can reach out to us as well. And as always, thank you for watching.